So Yuta and Rika, they're the real heart of this, aren't they? Hello and welcome to Will Watches. This is Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. So it's been a full year since I've last seen anything Jujutsu Kaisen, like to the date. It was September 22nd when I'm recording this. That's when my video went premiered for episode 24. But I know this is a prequel anyway, so I don't feel like I need to catch up on anything that bad. I'm very excited for this get to see Mappa on a movie budget. I, the animation is always gorgeous anyway, but this is just gonna be beautiful. I can already imagine how great this is going to look and of course I know this is a prequel and I know it focuses on this main character Utah. I've heard his name I've seen his design around and I know this is like the year before everything that's happening in season one is so we're getting Panda we're getting Inumaki we're getting Mei we're getting all of them in their first year and now there's Utah who I know isn't in the show so I'm imagining he either dies or something happens to him here there's loads of possibilities but I do have a bad feeling about this because he's not in the show at all but it could be cool to introduce him here in the movie and he show up later or maybe he's been turned into a curse there's loads of possibilities that it could be but it'd be cool for him to make a return just depending on where the story goes there's a few exciting possibilities and I also know Ghetto is in this and he is like one of the main villains in this i know he is in the show as well but it seems like he has a much bigger role in this because in the show we see him but we never really see him in action using any of his powers he's kind of putting the strings in the back so it'll be exciting to see what his power is i don't think we've ever seen like what his power actually is so before we get into this be sure to check out the patron over there you can find one week early access you can also find polls so you can vote for what's next and you can find a full length timer based version of this where you just sync up your own footage and you can watch along with me so yeah let's just jump right in it just immediately these colors wow that's gorgeous how vibrant it is oi, oi. okay yeah here he is this is yuta bullied okay this is weird it cuts into the text is that like inside his head the poor male students, including the leader, suffered grave injuries. Oh, did it stuff them in the cupboard? Yeah, it was like a curse that came down and grabbed them. Oh, and that's like that looked like Mojito, how he like transforms people a bit. <laughs> This is very much a mirror for Itadori being captured and executed. So he's really powerful, but he's been cursing people accidentally because it seems like he was saying sorry. But yeah, this is such a mirror to Isadori. Gojo wants to enroll him in the school. Okay, Rika, is that the curse? Is the curse like haunting him? Yeah, like, can you talk to it, get it to save people? You know, it's mirroring Itadori, but there's a much different mindset, quite obviously. Yuta just wants to die, get it over with, but can't. Just the slow moments where things can be beautiful, just the animators flexing. That was like a ring on a necklace. Usually that's if someone dies, like your wife dies, you get their ring on a necklace or something. But obviously he's like 16. <laughs> Maybe his mum or something. Uh, if the curse, um, Rika, if that killed his mum or something, maybe that could be it. 
There he is. He's got um, white bands on this time as well instead of the black one. Oh, look at Inumaki's hair as well, all spiked up. <laughs> so expressive. Oh, wow. He's just carrying all of that energy with him. Oh, they were just ready to fight. Yes, immediate hostility. Yeah, yeah, this is just where he's finding out. Yeah, so Rika's like protective. Oh, that's not the ring, is it? Promise to get married when they're older. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, he just seen it all. And she is Rika. She she turned into the curse. Then she's like protecting him now. Oh my god. It's already like gross enough seeing like a dead child body, but How do you even like begin to um, fathom that as, as like a child? Like if she just looked like herself, but as a curse, it'd be fine. But she's so like grotesque like that. Yeah, yeah they have to have a little bit of uh, introduction if people are watching this without watching the show. But it's not as bad as some other anime where you have to have like loads and loads of recap because this is a prequel they can get away with not explaining too much. They don't have to recap the whole season, you know? <laughs> she can just read right through him. It seems like he is like a nice person though. She's saying don't play the victim, but he was the victim of bullying. Oh, it's a live mission. Oh, that's really cool. It's like even more liquidy than in the show. Oh, yeah, they sit together if they're weak. Okay. Yeah, they're all just chilling, not really doing anything. Oh, are they all scared of Rika or something? Is she that powerful? Yeah, yeah, it's already special. He has, like, no combat ability, but that's just all in Rika's natural strength, I guess. But he just needs to learn how to control her and, like, get her to fight. Obviously, she'll fight to protect him, though. Oh. She's pretty much useless without that as well now. But it looked like she realised something as she was falling in. Oh, so even Maki's getting affected, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she cut herself on the way in, didn't she? He definitely, like, sees himself in this kid as well, it seems like. It's just reminding me of when he was seeing Rika getting hit. He didn't really want to come, did he? Yeah, instead of not hurting anyone, he can protect people, like, even more. Instead of just not hurting people with Rika, he can save even more people. Okay. 
Oh, she's huge as well, actually. I'm guessing she can, like, change size. Yeah, it's not really that Yuta is special grade, it's that Rika is. Oh, that's creepy, that huge smile, yeah. But she's not gonna go out of control, is she? This music is great. The music when um, Meki was giving her speech to him as well, that was great. Oh, the top half of her head's gone there as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the memory of Rika's pushing him on. That was a great moment. No surprise, it can get you emotional just 10, 20 minutes into the movie. Of course, we already have some emotional connection with Maki, but we don't really with Utah. But that was a great scene. So is that he, he'll call her out when he puts the ring on, or is he just going to keep it on the whole time now? <laughs> Oh, they met in hospital? He doesn't have some sort of like terminal illness or something, does he? Oh! He had already... He cursed her? And that's how she turned into this curse? Like, because they had this promise she couldn't fully die, she had to come back as a curse. Oh, and the student ID is right there for Ghetto to look at. He's going to be very interested that he's special grade though, isn't he? I mean, Rika didn't really lose control. Like, all of that damage was already caused by the curse anyway. They're still planning the execution. That'd be a pretty wild way if he dies just from an execution like that. And I was just thinking, like, this must hit harder for the who are second years in the show because um, if if they lost Yuta and then see how they lost Itadori as well, you know, see how that affects Fushiguro and Nobara. Yeah, yeah, because he himself can't really use any curse energy yet, so he can use a curse weapon like Maki does. Ooh, not... You've got to be careful when just sparring like this as well, though. Like, what if Rika just decides to protect him? Oh, yeah, can't get distracted at any point. Yeah, he's pretty t like timid with his stance there, doesn't he? Cool, he did get an attack in. Oh! <laughs> he's definitely determined, though. Yeah, you give it, give him that. Not even go get you, not that. Yeah, yeah. He was very, like, depressed when they first met him, wasn't he? <laughs> what? <laughs> Toto's not on his way, is he? That's the only reason I could think to ask that. Or is he just trying to set them up? He doesn't know how to like translate it yet. When Mackie and Panda talk to him, they can just kind of understand when he when he says salmon or something, they know what he means. Oh really? He's more advanced than both of them. But yeah, you you just special grade, but he's not really up to it at the moment. Are we gonna get like solo missions with each of them? We had one with Mackie, now we're getting one with Inu Maki, and then one with Panda maybe. Okay, so he's really limited this time. 
僕と言うた。殺されちゃうから。She says it so positively, doesn't he? Mononi, you are good to a toa to mendo no de, Imanochi, harat the crito no cotodes. It's funny, like a brand contacting them, they just want it for the capitalist reason, not like to. I mean, it will protect people in the future, but it's still weird them being the ones who contact them. Oh, that's cool. Dolly zoom. I mean, it's like artificial dolly zoom because there isn't an actual camera, but it's a cool technique. They said it was only low levels in here, but there's like a pack of lots of them, so they might be overwhelmed, but there could just still be a bigger one hiding somewhere. This is cool. Little fish swimming around. Okay, yeah, yeah, so they all like join together into one big thing, kind of. Oh, that's cool. They're all so weak as well that that would work. Yeah, that was already, um, that's quite a powerful one to use, wasn't it? There's gotta be something else though. Inimaki's hit his limit nearly already. I wonder if that was hand drawn or like CG with that. Oh, Ghetto's here. Twist. Ooh. <laughs> but yeah, that's him done. Oh, he dropped the medicine as well, of course. Didn't seem to be like, affected by the arm. Um... This one seems much more sentient than the rest. Oh, <laughs> was that like it backfiring on him, the twist or something? Yeah, what's it up to? I feel like this is like you just gotta step up and use his cursed sword. Yeah, he can do it. Look at the confidence. Is it only reacting to Rika, maybe? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Oh. Yeah, he got a little bit of a cut in. What are these blasts? They seem like they're kind of concussive blasts or something. Because they're not like explosions. Oh, he just jumped to get it. I was thinking, like, where is he? <laughs> but... Oh, look at that! <laughs> He's... I was worried that Yuta was, like, right next to him as well there, though. But the veil hasn't lifted yet. Is that because Ghetto is still here? Yeah, he's just sitting up there. Yeah, yeah. Just curse random people. Yeah, he sees himself in Utah a bit. I like the spiky hair on him as well. He's got like his own class of people though. Banish from Jujutsu High, yeah. I think I did know that. I just wasn't sure if I knew that from the anime or if that was a spoiler I knew. I mean, he's surprised that he's banished and not killed because it seems like their solution a lot of the time is to just kill anyone who's dangerous. Oh, yeah, he's right there. Just like groping her as well. Can they see that ball that he just formed there? <laughs> or is that invisible to them as well because they're not cursed users? <laughs> is he like building this like loyal following by doing that? And then one day he might have an army of people he can use by saying, you know, I helped you out, you helped me out in return. <laughs> So he views humans as just like lower life forms. Oh wow, yeah. 
Has he like screwed them over, just taken the money and not uh Yeah yeah, he's just rinsing them all. Ooh. It's gonna rip him apart. So he like turned that other curse into this marble and then like swallowed it. Is is he like gaining the powers whenever he does that or just like gaining more power when he does that yeah yeah he's just like right there is he trying to absorb that power or just like recruit him. He wants the strong to just be in power, yeah. The thing is, just because we know Yuta isn't in the show, does he get killed by Ghetto or does he join them? Would he actually be influenced like that? Yeah, yeah, he looks down on her like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oddly non-frontational at this point. Like, there's no action yet. I thought it would have been, like, on site the second he's on the school property. Gojo would attack him. So so they're attacking Shinjuku and I've heard of this like infamous Shinjuku arc but I think what he's saying here is happening in December that's still going to happen before Inumaki and the new first year is coming as well isn't it because that's going to be like season two the Shinjuku arc we haven't seen um Nanami this whole movie actually <laughs> Yeah, he can just summon them all so quickly like that. He's already got that kind of super speed that mirrors Gojo. It reminded me of him there. It did seem like they, met, they had like a somewhat friendship before, actually. I thought he was... I mean, he was like a former student of Gojo's, but their relationship doesn't seem as much like that. They seem kind of similar in age. Yeah, yeah, so you can just like summon them. So when he eats them, is that him like collecting them so he can use them again? So we're getting it all out war this movie? Okay. Was it all a bluff? They were just going to show up and... There won't be any demons or what? We're already skipping right to it. Oh, is it all just a distraction so he can just walk into the school? Oh, is Rika that strong? Is that confident in her? But Rika's going to be working her best to protect him as well, though, isn't she? Oh, wow. Yeah, she's constantly being shamed. Ever since a child. It's good that she developed this strength though, because otherwise she would have just had this massive complex. The colours here, yeah, this sunset. So is it just these two on their own in the school? No one else to help? <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's like a whale and they're all travelling on his back. Oh, they actually did manage to evacuate the civilians. I'm surprised of that, considering, like, how do you evacuate it without what excuse do you make? Yeah, yeah, he knows something's up. 
They're both going back for to help. Oh, look at this, like, transmutation circle to teleport them. Oh, wow, it's really... I mean, obviously we know Mackie isn't dead, but she's out of action. Straight in. Oh, look at that, the red eye. Come on, let's go Panda. I wonder if we'll see any of his other forms true as well. Yeah, gorilla form. Yep, of course. We don't actually know what his other one is, do we? Oh, we got a hit on him. And it followed straight up. Yeah, he's just ruthless, constantly attacking. Oh, Mackie's weapon. Ooh. It's still fine, isn't it? Because it can go into a different form. <laughs> the animation where he's like, he's like, his head was like caved in there in the animation. There's like a few frames where it looks so funny. <laughs> I'm not dying yet. Or well, he's not done yet. The composition there was so cool. Come on, yeah, you just gotta step in and help. Oh, Panda had like lost an arm, but yeah, that's still like fine, I guess. Physical damage does, isn't really a problem with Panda. That wasn't strong enough to actually make him run away. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> We don't want this darkness overtaking you to though. Oh, look at that. Oh, she can protect them as well. You always know that NOH is going to pop off when the character has like tentacle like powers, you know? Yeah, look at all of these powers uses like developed. Oh, she's jealous of Mackie. Yeah, like her mentality is still kind of like a child. Oh. <laughs> He can, he's like imbued Inumaki's power into that megaphone. Where did he get all of these powers? He can heal as well. Oh, that's so cool, the black and white. Yeah, when did he get this strong? Yeah, appreciating him even more. Yeah, he's seeing how strong Rika actually is. Oh, <laughs> the camera. <laughs> that was cool. I always love it when characters like, like run across another character or something like that. <laughs> Oh, she's got an axe. I don't know if we've seen her in action either. Yeah! I wonder if we'll see any more of Gojo, if, we, if he's got any techniques we haven't seen yet in the show. Yeah, yeah, he only has to delay him, doesn't he, really? <laughs> Oh, look at this, yeah, the hand-to-hand. -hand. All the smear frames as well. Wow! <laughs> 
Yeah, you can just teleport like that. It's so cool. This reminds me a tiny bit of one from Mob Psycho 100 with Shimazaki. <laughs> Speed. I love those extended, like, one shots where the camera is just wild flying about. <laughs> All of those impact frames. Oh boy. <laughs> He's so quick. That wasn't planned, was it? <laughs> we just get a punch in. <laughs> and a black flash at that. Did he just do that naturally as well? Did he learn a black flash? Or was that just... He just was going for a punch. He's just gonna let everything out. Only 16, so there's only 20 special grades in existence. So you combine them all in. I'm surprised we haven't seen a domain expansion in this season as well either. Oh. Get to see Nanami in action. I'm glad he hasn't been in the whole thing, but I'm glad he at least gets an action scene. Is he in overtime as well? Oh, a black flash. And a second. Was that three, three in a row? Was was this us seeing his record? Because he was that him setting the record there that Itadori later breaks. The record was the I can't remember if the record was three or four that Itadori breaks. I'm glad we're getting these little quick glimpses of everyone. Useless Miwa, not so useless there. <laughs> and there's May. Where's Todo? Come on. <laughs> now to have that little bit of fan service getting all of these in. <laughs> He's gotta get home before the talk show. I thought it was gonna be that big guy didn't like big asses or something. One last time is that is like giving himself up for this. Does he have a future though? Be together, maybe be together in the afterlife. Yeah. Die together, defeating him. <laughs> He's <laughs> <laughs> like destroying the whole school. Yeah, it's like a nuke almost. So, was that it? That's just both of them dead. Oh, wow. Yeah, he just wants Rika. Yeah, yeah. He knew he wouldn't quite kill them. He knew he'd hurt them, but knew he wouldn't. Yeah, he set that whole thing out. But we know he doesn't die here. How does he get out of this, though? Or just go to just not have the guts to kill him? Couldn't do it. And he gets away. Oh, Yuta! Does he actually survive all of this? Or is he just left like without Rika but then he's no longer in the show because he's no longer needs um he can no longer be a sorcerer, he's just chilling as a human. 
Or he will die here with her. <laughs> oh, she's transformed into her child self. Oh, what? He placed one on her. She, she died because he put a curse on her? Or oh, he cursed her. Okay, saying don't. Okay, okay. Saying don't die, he cursed her. Seven. Seven. The, the colors are so gorgeous. Yeah, exactly. It's called a curse, but it, it wasn't a curse. He saved her life or let her live longer. So Yuta's fine? Yeah, oh, it's just gorgeous. What's Yuta up to then? His best friend. Yeah, I was wondering what Gojo said to him when we didn't hear it. Was it like, you're my best friend or I love you, like in a platonic way? There probably are people that ship them though, but <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's up with Yuta in the future then? I'm really curious about that, if it'll show up later in the show, maybe. Okay, so that was Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. That was really great. Of course, Mappa on a movie budget. They're just going ham. All of the animation was gorgeous. I especially loved the colours. Everything seemed like really vibrant, especially at the start. And then we had some like sunset scenes and then all of the kind of pink and purples right at the end there that was really gorgeous. I think mean, the quality of the animation is really great, but there are some things like stylistically that I'm not sure if I enjoy. Like some of the textures, the way they work, on the curses it feels a bit off or it's just like personally i don't like it and sometimes the line art the line art on the bigger curses is bigger and i don't know if i like that or if i'd like it if the line art like stayed in scale i'm not sure if what i'd actually prefer i'd need to see like a side to side comparison those are just like little things that i notice when watching and it's weird when something's like so photorealistic it almost makes the characters like stand out from the background there are a few times where the background was just like so 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 photorealistic you forget that it's animated so you and rika they're the real heart of this aren't they so Yuka and Rita, they are the real heart of this. And of course, you know, because they're not in the show, something's bound to happen to them. I'm actually surprised. It seems like Yuta is still alive, so there's a chance he can make a return. But Rika definitely can't. And I was getting emotional there when they were like saying their goodbyes, like, oh, we'll die together in this like beautiful giant explosion. It was like a nuke that had gone off, you know? I thought they might have just died like in that moment, but it, they did like carry on a little bit after. And then they had that moment where Rika, she like turned into the bubbles and it was revealed that it was actually Yuta who cursed him. And they'd said at one point it was like the love that had cursed her, but that wasn't really the case or well, it was it was like his love for her which caused him to curse her to survive to live on but she was actually thankful for that she got to live like another six years with him so you know they called it a curse and curse usually has like negative connotations but it was like a positive thing for her in the end there now i do wonder what Yuta is up to? Is he just living his life as a normal civilian? I wonder if we'll see him again because he could still show up using cursed objects like the way Maki does because we saw how great of a fighter he was at the end there. He did it did seem like he had a bit of a leap in strength there but he was really great in that final fight him one-on-one -on -one with Ghetto. Of course most of that is the power coming from Rika and him like channeling that energy but he got really good at channeling the energy controlling it you know but you know if they can give him another special grade weapon he could still be of use later on in the story and i had mentioned it in the 
reaction but because i thought he was going to die i thought there might have been a connection there with kind of itadori how itadori dies for a bit in season one and we see the second year's panda in a maki maki we see them they can kind of relate to that relate to future guru and obara and like there would have been like a connection there if he had actually died but actually neither yuta or itadori actually died in the end there i don't think we necessarily learned too much more about the second years but it was still great to see you know more characterization for them to see them interact more you know all the stuff in there was stuff we already kind of knew about maki about her and the zenin clan we got like a little bit of seeing what she went through how that she was like bullied and fr like cast aside by her mother and all of the others you know but it wasn't like anything like groundbreakingly new and i don't think you can really do that in a prequel like this that kind of information comes in the main story i do think these prequels and kind of side stories they work so well for movies for things that already shows you know because i feel like sometimes with anime movies they just feel like filler and this doesn't at all because it is like prequel it is canon this is stuff that was like a manga volume that the author had wrote right whereas something like the my hero academia movies even though i love them they're just kind of side stories that sometimes you can't even consider canon you know they like try and make it canon and you can kind of explain it away but they're not really they're kind of semi-canon but we know this one is like 100% canon so i think doing backstories for characters we already know and love i think that's the way to do it really if they wanted to do more movies we could do a whole movie just on the past friendship of ghetto and gojo that would be a great movie actually i'm sure that would make for like a real heartbreaking like battle fight but that might be a fight that they're saving for season two or three however far into the show you know so maybe it's better to save a big fight between those two for the show but i think maybe after they've had a fight in the show you could do that or like after the show's finished you could do that and then have their backstory just flesh that out a bit unless there's flashbacks in the show again you know there's a few ways they can do it and i did like learning a bit more about ghetto and gojo in this you know ghetto he's kind of been quite in the shadows in the main show and i did know he was like a former student of the jujitsu school but i wasn't sure if i couldn't remember if i heard that in the show or if i'd heard that as a, like a spoiler so i didn't want to mention it until it actually was confirmed in the movie just in case i was spoiling anyone watching this at home usually it's a exiled student with their master and the exiled student becomes a villain that's like quite a common like story trope especially in anime it seems much more like they're equals than they are like master and student they don't really have like type of relationship it seems much more like partners best friends equals than it was gojo was his teacher so i'm guessing maybe it's probably just quite long ago maybe they were both in school together or something like that and i am really curious what gojo said i wonder if that is something that will ever be revealed maybe later on in the actual show or if that is just something we're going to have to interpret was it just you're my best friend i love you or there's loads of things it could be right I do think like the plot for this was quite simple in a way but it serves its purpose you know it feels like that kind of with a lot of anime movies that are like from shows the plot is just quite simple going along to building up to this big finale where they can really flex their animation muscles but you know it serves its purpose there's nothing like super shocking or twisty along the way it's kind of what you expect a few action scenes getting to know the characters building up to a big fight at the end but it's kind of like a proven structure that works really well and i always love seeing like a good training montage that kind of thing seeing how he interacts with maki that was really great i do wish we had got a little bit more panda in this because we had you know he had that solo mission with maki he had that solo mission with inu maki so i was waiting for maybe a solo mission with panda get to learn a bit more about panda you know panda did step up we got to see his gorilla form out again you know we did get to see him in action but i wish we got a tiny bit more of him and it was also great seeing the students from the other schools we got todo just that little bit you know they have to throw in a little bit of fan service you know if there's people watching this that haven't seen the show they wouldn't understand that so they got cut for it pretty quick but it's nice to have that bit of fan service and like nanami as well he got a pretty big fight in there as well you know if you went into this without knowing the show you'd be like why are they suddenly focusing on this guy who is this i mean in general this 
movie probably does work quite well if you haven't seen the show there will be some things you probably miss like obviously the kind of parallels to Itadori but you know I think it still works pretty well there's a few things they kind of glimpse over like they kind of introduce the second years or their first years in this but the second years in the show they introduce the second years and they just kind of quickly tell you what their powers are you know less things you pick up from the show but they have to just key in the new audience a little bit there don't they but i think in general it works pretty well because yuta he is like an audience surrogate in a way joining this world just like itadori was as well i almost missed it there is a end credit scene so let's quickly check that out okay <laughs> Where is this? Somewhere like tropical? Oh, this is... This is where Yuta is at the moment, maybe? He's off abroad somewhere. I'm here. Oh, with him? Is he in Kenya? Beef is chuto, yeah. Beef is chuto. Is that Gojo? Nande. Oh my god, Why is he suddenly working with Yuta? They were other other sides earlier. Okay, um was that modern day? I'm not exactly sure. Like when when that takes place, it seems like it might be modern day catching up to where Yuta is now. So we know he's abroad in Kenya. Gojo's there. Gojo can just like teleport there, can't he? So well, confirmation he's still alive and around, but he's quite far away. But that that does leave it open for him to return at some point. And he does still have his sword with him, so he is maybe doing some sort of exorcisms, fighting some curses off in Kenya with the guy that Gojo was fighting with before. So Go Gojo managed to befriend him, I guess. <laughs> so overall, I really love this, but there was one thing that really let it down. Where was the Juju stroll? Come on, guys, you're completely missing out. Zero out of ten. <laughs> So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, consider leaving a comment or a like, sharing your thoughts. And if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of the future uploads. And I'll be sure to be covering season two whenever that comes out. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.